Okay, guys, um, Dave here, back again, G7IYK. Um, right, so um, in the previous video, we covered um, setting up or configuring the uh, VSWR calibration, uh, which is a sort of prerequisite um, when you first power the unit on um, after the processor has been flashed. So yeah, all that VSWR information is stored uh, in non-volatile memory. So I thought I'd just go over, well, it's pretty simple to be honest, uh, the operation of this uh, unit. Um, you, in essence, you, you find your loop and then you um, you can move to whatever frequency you, you want within its tunable range. So um, for the first thing to know, if you look at the, uh, the GUI, um, or the PC application, is the lower and upper limit frequencies are currently set to 6.5 megahertz and 14.2 megahertz respectively um, that those frequencies dictate the range over which the um, loop tuner or the firmware running on the loop tuner actually uh, performs its search um, I know for example my particular loop which is sitting out on the patio and, and wired in now here on this lower connector you can probably just see it connected um, this particular loop is uh, resonant or can be resonant between about uh, just below 7 megahertz and about 14.2 megahertz uh, so it covers the 40 and the uh, 20 meter band so uh, there's precious little point in me searching for uh, searching for the loop outside of that range um, below or above those frequencies because I know by design it won't be there um, so by setting the frequencies, the upper and lower bounds, in a more sensible way, you can increase the, the or decrease, sorry, the the, the search time, because um, it you know, if you, otherwise otherwise it has to it would have to search over the in, the entire amateur band from sort of three and a half to 30, 40 megahertz, which is would be significantly more time consuming. Okay, so uh, right, uh, so my loop sitting out there, uh, and I know it's somewhere between those two frequencies so all I do is I pr to find it I just press so we're, we're, we're currently got a flashing cursor at find loop so if I press the button to select that the uh, LED here comes on to indicate that the tuner is in circuit and it's switched out the radio and it's uh, now attempting to find the loop which I set about half an hour ago 20 minutes half an hour ago so it might be roughly in the same place Okay, so it's at, um, there we go, so it's found it located at 7.1 or 7.095, so, so it's, yeah, it's about where I left it. Um, so that's where the loop currently is sitting. Um, so if we want to move it, we can either um, do that via via the, the interface on the hardware or we can do it via the, the PC GUI. So um, let's do it via the hardware. So what we do is we, we need to move move to the to, to the move option. So we press the down select button and it's now moved to the move option and we press the uh, select button. And now we can see, oh, oh, that button. I have to replace that button. Um, the um, we can see the first digit is now flashing and we can use these two keys now to navigate backwards and forwards so we've moved over to the to the point one um, hundred kilohertz index and then increase that to say uh, set point two and then we press this select button again and off the loop goes so it's now moving the loop so the, you'll notice the located frequency starts increasing that's not a simulated frequency that is the actual loop where it currently is as it moves I can hear the motor chugging away on the patio probably probably can't hear it on the mic so there we go so it's got it so it's moved it to 7.2 7.095 so, sorry 7.195 uh, thereabouts within five about five kilohertz of target frequency um, so <clears throat> now we can we can move the loop by hand if we if we so desire so um, I'm gonna try and do this without getting my hand in the way of the camera it's quite tricky um, we could use the rotary encoder so if I press the rotary encoder down this rate light comes on so the now I'm changing the rate the motor's not moving now I can just I can just increase the rate or decrease the rate so if we put it about there and then go back to a moving mode now if I rotate the rotary encoder now in a clockwise direction you we will see the frequency uh, increase so I'll, I can hear I can hear the motor move with each rotation if we watch the um, located frequency so we're now at 7.24, 7.25. So that's kind of kind of going up with the current setting in about um, 10 kilohertz steps, give or take a bit. So 
7.35. So they were about, we're now, we're now moved to about 7.35 from the 7.2 we were at before, and fairly coarse jumps at the moment, just to sort of prove the point. So, okay, so say now we want to move back to where we started at 7.2. So I'll do it via the PC GUI this time rather than the, um, rather than the hardware platform. So all you need to do basically is move over here to, so this is set to 7.2. Uh, I'll just say move loop. Motor's chugging away. And with a fair tailwind, we should end up back at 7.2. Love a little, little dance around the target frequency. And there we go, we're at 7.2. Thereabouts. With it. About five kilohertz. Now we notice that the VSWR is reading one. Uh, that's about right for my antenna at this frequency. Um, at uh, 14 meg, it's more like 1 1.6, 1 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 1.7. Uh, um, I mean, this is not a VSWR meter. Um, I, I've I've tested it against um, a, a two or three other, yeah, three other VSWR meters, uh, and it's pretty accurate. Um, to be perfectly honest, uh, every VSWR meter I've tried, and they're all commercial, all read slightly differently. Um, there's no they're, no, they're not all consistent. They're all out. They're all different by a different amount. Some are high, some are low. This one's about in the middle. Um, I mean, one of the problems uh, measuring VSWR, especially when you're close to one, which is unfortunate because that's where most mag loops tend to be, it is it's actually quite difficult to resolve. Uh, anything meaningful when you're down at a, a, um, a VSWR of one. The, the reason being uh, a VSWR of one uh, basically means that no power is reflected from the antenna. All the power is absorbed by the antenna and therefore what you're trying to measure at very low levels of VSWR is very very small reflected signals um, and it's quite difficult um, whether it's in an analog domain or, or in a um, a digital domain. With a digital domain you've got the added complication of only so much resolution in your analog to digital converters um, and you know there's losses and issues with the with with, with you know with, with the measuring bridge it's an analog circuit so it's quite difficult but I, I would say this was reasonably accurate it, it's a good indication of your VSWR it, it, it's going to tell you whether your VSWR is like you know a serious issue or whether you're sort of pretty pretty close within you know, 1 to 1 1.5 of where you want to be. Um, okay, well, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it, really, I mean, in terms of actually the guts of movement. I mean, you can use presets. I'll, I'll do another video in a minute about presets. I mean, all, all, all the presets basically do is just give you a list of non-volatile values, and when you select them, it moves the preset to the, to the, to the, move, um, the move field and allows you to move it rather than them to sort of keep, um, you know, putting the number in by hand. Um, it's just a, almost like a little convenient library of frequencies, and that, that's pretty much all the presets do. Um, and there's some. I'll do another little video on the on on the configuration on the configuration menus. But it's pretty simple. I mean, there's not. You know, it's not. It's, in principle, it's just sort of you know find the loop, and move to the loop by various mechanisms. Um, okay. Well, that's good. Um, thanks for watching. Cheers.